Hello and welcome everybody to today's lecture about understanding the electric grid, the requirements, structure and grid stability issues. Your benefit of the course is basic understanding of the principle of the electrical grid, understanding of the tasks and how they are assigned to the individual devices and I will give you typical explanations for solutions as state of the art. This course is not meant as an engineering lecture, but it will give general overview. So the essentials for a resilient electricity system are energy as a global quantity and focus number two is power as a local quantity. And for the sake of completeness, I give you the full content of my lecture. Today we concentrate on blackout due to lack of energy. Let's get started. Now let's start with an example for infeed in terms of a hydropower plant. In a hydropower plant, the water comes from the upper basin through the turbine and while it does so, it converts the static energy into mechanical power, the generator turns it into electrical power and this is fed on to the loads. Now these are the essentials of the mechanical and electric circuit. Now let's assume we have a second power plant, which is just somewhere else. And now we do an important step forward. We connect these two to interconnected operation by feeding on one point of common connection and from there the power goes onto the loads. Now let's assume something happens for whatever reason, one turbine and one generator tripped out. And now we have a severe problem. If you check this, the loads will take their old demand and power out of the grid, but there is only one generator supplying it. This is too little. So the air balance of energy and the balance of power must be made up from something else. And what is that? This is the kinetic energy of the rotating masses, which is turned into electrical energy. And this leads to a speed loss. The rotating energy is consumed and is reduced and therefore the speed goes down because the speed is rotating energy. Now the controller comes into action. The controller senses the reducing speed and opens the valve. You can see the valve has opened a little bit. This will go on until finally the remaining generator has taken over the full load and the system has stabilized and that is okay. Now we repeat the same process, but with limited reserves. So again, we have the two power plants running in parallel. One generator trips out. There is a deficit of power, which is immediately recovered by the remaining generating unit. And again, the speed is decreased. The controller again comes in, opens the valve, but please watch how far it is already opened. It can do a little bit, but no more. So this means we have a bottleneck concerning the conversion of water, energy and power into mechanical and electrical energy and power. And this means that the system will not recover. The speed will go down while the kinetic energy is again and again taken out of the rotating masses. You see it gets weaker and weaker until we have an under frequency trip. This means the power plants go into self protection and they trip out and separate themselves from the grid. Now, once an under frequency trip has happened, you see the last remaining circuit breaker has opened. There is no voltage provided to the loads and this is a blackout. So what can be done against this? The countermeasures are first interconnected operation of many parallel generators, heavy rotating masses and rapid regulation units with power reserve. So there must be generating units that can speed up and step up their power output. The coordinated load shedding is meant to balance the consumption of electric energy with the output of the generating units by tripping out parts of the load. These are very severe measures and for these please refer to my lecture about load shifting and load shedding. So I thank you very much for staying on with me for this lecture about blackout due to lack of energy and I hope to see you again soon in my next lectures. Thank you very much and bye bye.